I didn't intend to have two parts, but I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable in speaking for longer than a certain amount of time in one part. So we're gonna break it up into two parts. Oh, goodness gracious. I am working on so many different things at the same time. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings, you guys. You are gonna have to watch the previous part to understand what in the world we're speaking about here because if you don't um, do that, you... You're just going to be bandwagoning on an existing topic, so please go to part one, okay? But right now I'm speaking about compromise, settling, and how it is that God tells us from the very beginning that we need to count the cost of being a disciple. And to be a disciple is to be filled by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit awards us long-suffering and patience. Long-suffering is the tenement, or the equivalent of, is not the equivalent, sorry, or the tenement of just going through a lot at all despite what it is that, you, that despite what it is that you're doing with your life no long suffering is going through a lot and in your going through a lot maintaining a piety maintaining a godliness maintaining a holiness that that is the very definition of long suffering so you don't get to call yourself i spoke about that in the first part long suffering when you have settled you have compromised you have done strange things and so you expect god to bless you also one of the fruit of the holy spirit is patience and the lord expects us therefore to wait for him he does however let us know that the world is going to give us a lot of grief so when we anticipate the grief that the world is going to give us we re we understand do you know what i'm saying that we are going to be mocked for waiting on god it's just going to be a thing we're going to be mocked and jeered at and i i used an example of some dude that i dated in the past when i was newly saved maybe like two years into the faith and he he mocked me he teased me he basically he told me that i'm pretty only at night you're gonna have to go to the previous part to gauge the exceptional nature of that insult all right because i gave uh, more context mm. and then i foresaw into the future that this here man if he can insult me when i'm just 28 on my beauty what's he gonna do when i'm 38 and 48 and 58 and then i lamented at the tail end of that first part about how it is that i am being expected and pursued hotly by men right now using spirits and everything fallen occult men who are telling themselves that but come on Garabo, you're 40 what are you still waiting for why are you expecting more and my answer to that was in the previous part of my point exactly the very kind of man that i fled from when i was 28 is rearing his ugly head now he reared his ugly head at 37 the guy in america who imagined i had to take him and all his rubbish because i was 37 now i'm 39 turning 40 this year and more so are these dastardly men saying the exact same thing the very thing that i foresaw i would have in a husband understand i'm, I'm 39 i'd be married now uh, over a decade if i had settled that's what you must understand i would be married now over a decade if i had compromised there are permutations that vary as to who i would be married to my ex-boyfriend tried to come back if i had settled i would have married him the guy that i dated that told me i'm only pretty at night was intending to marry me ultimately so if i had married him i would now today be married about a decade maybe no, not a decade perhaps like 13 not 13 years no sorry like maybe 11 12 years i'd be married to him the, all that time by now if i had compromised so those are you who think who think that i'm unmarried because god has not um sorry because i i am fussy i gave men chances that tried to marry me but it didn't work out because i was biblical as a christian my ex bumped because he was ungodly the dude from mtn bumped because he insulted me we were talking about marriage and then the guy from america bumped he he essentially hit a brick wall because he was rude he manifested demons all up in my grill and started to mistreat me and then we broke up and after we broke up i was the one that was like maybe we should talk and he was one that was, that was passing me shade and then only once i healed was he then trying to come back but by then the lord had already showed me so much about his darkness and i was like no thank you and the guy seeing as people say that i'm also my standards are high the guy from america was twice divorced with two kids he was prepared to claim and from what the lord showed me there were others that he was not taking care of that he was not prepared to let me know of because he was scared i would reject him so i was gonna be a third wife to a man that's not even taking care of some of his children and the reason why i was going to be that was because i was 37 and i imagined that there's no way that god is bringing my husband along so trust me i tried to settle but it was my godliness that warded off darkness that's what protected me it was not my wisdom because i threw that away as soon as too much persecution hit me i was prepared to settle it was just not being prepared to compromise it was being maintained as a biblical christian it was my fasting it was my praying it was all of these things that kept me a child of god that ultimately made these people blow off me i counted the cost of being a disciple and the lord cares 
that we should not be humiliated by our settle and our compromise and because of how much he cares he goes out of his way to throw people out that don't make sense but we are the ones that when they come back because they always do like a boomerang we are the ones that despite the warning signs the sirens we let them come back the guy in america for instance tried to come back i had gotten a dream from god showing me his attempt to infiltrate into my life using some movie that i had seen on netflix of a woman that was basically taken out of a cryopreservation tube taking her to a new planet to live out the rest of her life and this guy unplugged this woman because he was bored and lonely and this woman ended up therefore missing out on her future because this guy was selfish and decided that he wanted a partner a companion and so unplugged the woman out of her preservation tube god it, it, the movie um the the female actor actress in it is jennifer lawrence you would know what movie this is i forgot what the name of it is you know how the male lead in that movie unplugs jennifer lawrence from her cryo tube and she thinks that it was just an error with the tube until she finds out that he deliberately unplugged her because he got unplugged first and was bored and lonely living by himself on this ship going to some distant planet and so he selfishly took a woman out from her position to inherit a future and the lord gave me a dream of me being jennifer lawrence in that movie since i had seen that movie he was hinting to me that this guy's gonna come back and upon coming back he's going to unplug you from the future i have given you he wants to remove you from your cryo preservation tube because he unplugged himself out of his own tube he got out from the promise he compromised he settled so when he comes completely ignore him i got the dream i let it slide lo and behold within a week from that dream he sends me an email i still love you i love you with a passion i'm sorry for ghosting you blah blah all that i was like whoa dude leave me alone leave me alone i'm also aware of all of your sorcery plus the lord has shown me abc about yeah no and ever since then the dude has been all up in my grill with witchcraft and prepared to let me go so what i'm trying to explain to you is that they come back but the lord warns you even before they come back and when he warns you before he alerts you as to what their general strategy is going to be when they come back but there comes a time when after god takes a person out of your life and after he warns you over and over again but you insist on being with them that you then end up missing out on the promise when there's sirens and all different kinds of alarms just ringing and ringing and ringing in your head in the run-up to you marrying a person and you marry them anyway but like literally all the way up until i do god would have been telling you don't 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 god is not coercive but he has got a very vocal loud resonating warning that you will feel it'll be just sitting on you it'll be just chilling on you do you understand what i'm saying and you will feel it all the way up until you marry the wrong woman or you marry the wrong guy all the way all the way this guy in america i ran on the dream that god gave me i also ran on how he mistreated me i ran on what i asked for that's the thing you will remember i will remember all your benefits i ran on the memory of what i prayed for in a husband and this guy just nothing of his made sense on top Blessed of that on top of that he was worse than any guy that i'd ever been with this guy in america from america was worse even than the guy um what is this then the south african dude the one from mtn who told me that i'm only beautiful at night he once told me that i've got a big head because of my spongo the guy from the u.s like that level of insulting of a woman and i was like my goodness and he used to tell me you keep on saying in your youtube channel that nobody wants you so i mean yeah i'm here that's how he hollered at me that's how he asked me out also came in kakorobela i had never been pursued like that before a man basically telling me you say no one wants you i'll take you oh like feeling like you you're, you're just like something that somebody is dusting off because everybody threw it away like when a man does not see you as the pearl of like it's just a, a gem like something that is worthy of protecting and uh, you know uh, acquiring working really hard to acquire and seeing the, the value of it every woman wants to be cherished when a man does not cherish you even in the way that he pursues you but when he makes it clear that nobody else wants you so i'll take you that's how that guy in america was that's how much i was in so much pain that i was literally set, literally settling for that guys i was settling for that i was settling for somebody what in, what in the world is going on with my screen over here i was settling for someone that, like i don't even know what's going on right now one minute i was settling for someone that was out here telling me that if it was not for him nobody else would want me like no woman should ever take that in their stride i don't know what's going on right now like with my camera like it's doing funny strange things i don't know if you can see that it's like flickering like going on and off on me like i don't care 
at this point uh, i just need to get this message out the, what i'm trying to explain is that there tends to be so much that just does not sit right with you whenever a person it does not make sense yet you do it anyway and we are inclined to settling we are inclined towards settling the more time progresses or the more that which we imagine we were waiting for can't possibly come the more we feel like it has eluded us and there is nothing more uh, influential to make you settle than age there is nothing more influential to make you settle than age when god almighty is the author of time i like genetics poem i will wait for you oh, you know my aunties and uncles telling me about my biological clock when i serve the author of time that's what genetics says i love that poem from the moment i listened to it uh, all those years ago when i got first saved and it just keeps ringing resonating in my mind that why are you worried about your biological clock when you serve the author of time when you serve the god of the universe who manufactured you knit you together in your mother's womb saw your unformed substance knew every last day of your life before anything could happen why what makes you think that he did not cater into account the fact that you would get to 38 single 39 40 what makes you think that he didn't see that what makes you think that he didn't see that you know what you ask for in god in prayer guys you know you know and the bible says neither eye has seen nor ear heard nor mind conceived the things which god has prepared for those who wait on him so therefore when something comes through and it's shoddy and it's cracked up and it's got all different kinds of horns it it, it, it it's ebbing and flowing it's giving compromise settle and it's worse even than whatever under heaven i apologize i'm i'm busy with it it's like yeah at this wee hours of the morning it's it's giving compromise even in comparison to whatever under heaven it is that you were doing when you were in the world like when you were still lost as lost can get you had better you dated better dudes you had five ex-boyfriends ten ex-boyfriends and all of them it appears treated you like a queen in comparison to the man that you're now getting married to like you're marrying a dude that is worse even than your worst ex guys like it's happening all over and the thing that makes the devil feel like basically attempt to achieve this particular feat is the passage of time the very fruit of patience and long suffering that is a virtue is attacked by the devil he attacks your long suffering he says precisely because you've been suffering for long you're you're expecting too much he says precisely because you have been sitting around waiting on god to do what exactly look at you you're 40. he attacks patience and he attacks long suffering like virtues that are beautiful that you have been waiting a war we're walking in all this time while you are waiting the devil will make will basically second guess them he will cause them to look like it's nothing at all it's nothing much he will try to make them look like you're silly to still expect this now that like what 13 years has progressed since your last stable relationship he will tell you that you're turning 40 and then laugh he will tell you that you've suffered like a dog for just waiting around on this jesus when it is that very long suffering that makes you one who's about to receive that which neither eye has seen nor ear heard nor mind conceived the things that god prepares for those who wait for on him and it is also that very patience that is going to give you the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you don't give up and yet he mocks it he mocks your weight on god as a waste of time and he mocks your long suffering as service to an unforgiving unloving and monstrous god that just left you to not get anything you want in prayer i don't know how many times i keep on hearing uh fallen spirits telling me that i'm walking in unanswered prayer that i've got no no answered prayer am i dead no i'm still alive have i menopause no i can still have babies have i lost my beauty no i'm still seemly have i have i there's just so much of me that has been preserved and yet i'm being told that my prayers have not been answered my prayers have not been answered yeah the devil will always say that god did not answer your prayers before you get your prayers answered because the lord tends to insist upon patience and he also tends to insist upon long suffering so in the run-up to you will get mocked for not having answered prayer when you are yet to get it it is about not giving up and so many people one minute so many people give up so many people settle they 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 allow themselves to take what is being given them at a time when they're panicking they're anxious that nothing could possibly come because they're using the standards of this world to gauge the likelihood of acquisition of what it is that they ask for in prayer they're made to believe that what they ask for is bizarre it's over the top that it's naive and that it's going to cost them their future if they don't scale it down the devil works to the nail to make that a reality in the lives of christians and these christians if they do settle because they imagine they got to scale down the regret is severe in the future i would have regretted marrying that dude even though the warning signs would have been there 
I said earlier that if at all I had gotten married to him, I'd be married now over a decade. I don't even think I would have lasted a decade with that guy. I think it would have resulted in divorce. He was just so ungodly. He was so ungodly. The American man, I like to say of him that I would not have gotten a divorce. I would have gotten a funeral. He was violent. He was going to kill me. I was going to regret it. I knew when I was with him that there was no way that neither eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind conceived the things that God has prepared for those who wait for him, that he's that thing. I just, I knew it. I knew it. And yet I forced it. But by the amazing grace of God, because I maintained a biblical Christianity, because I, I maintained a piety, because despite my desire to settle, I still was holding on to God. The Lord gave me enough to ward that guy away. He's the one that became rude to me. And despite his rudeness, I still wanted to talk. And he was rude for long enough for me to get over him. And then once I got over him, that's when he tried to come back. That's when he tried to come back. Like, I was protected. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. When, you, like right now, even like if you're listening to this video and you are engaged to somebody, you are about to get married. I like to say that, like, insofar as you are yet to walk down the aisle and finish the deal, insofar as you are yet to say I do, you can cancel it anytime. Because the kingdom of heaven is like big brother house, do you understand? The kingdom of heaven is like survivor, winner takes all. You either get the great husband or you get a treacherous one because the devil has a thing about bringing horrible, horrible things into the lives of Christians so that he can discredit God. He wants to discredit what God does for his children. He wants to cause the world to look at Christians and be like, if, if, if God is so good, why in the world did this woman end up married to an abusive man? Why was her ex-boyfriend better than him? Why, like proper, I knew this woman when she was still in the world, before she gave her life to Christ, her life was so much better. Look at her now that she's a Christian, she's married to some random. She's so frustrated, she's always miserable and she, like she, her glory has fled from her face. It's written in God's word that we overcome the devil by the blood. One minute, we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So when we give testimony of what God did for us, we conquer Satan in ways that are unfathomable. He's already conquered, he's already defeated. But when we get answered prayer, we show that God is who he says he is and that he has made himself, uh, he has proven himself faithful in our lives. But when we compromise and we settle, we make Jesus look real bad. We make it look as if though, I, I waited for five years on Christ for a husband and I ended up married to some dude who's cheating on me. Did you really, did you really wait for five years on Jesus only to end up married to a guy who was cheating on you? Or did you, after five years of waiting on Christ, decide that it's been too long and that you're going to take matters into your own hands, that the guy that's been pursuing you, even though you're apprehensive about him, you're going to go and take him anyway. And then you end up getting married after five years of marriage and you speak a testimony at your wedding saying that God finally brought your man along. You were waiting for five years, but you knew in the run up to marrying this guy that there was just so much all fallen. And that he was a far cry from what it is that you asked for for God in prayer. A far cry. Like he's, he's nothing in comparison to what it is that you bulleted, that you jotted down, wrote down on a piece of paper as to God, this is what I want in a man. He's a far cry, but you're 35 and your womb is geriatric. And you are telling yourself that I, Joe, it's, 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 it's now or never. So really and truly, did you wait for five years or did you stop waiting at five years? You stopped waiting at five years. I was, I, I wanted to stop waiting at 37. At that stage, I had waited 10 years. 10 going on 11 years. I'm now 39. It's 12 going on 13 years. I was trying to stop waiting at 10 going on 11 years. And after marrying that guy from America, I would have said after 10 years of waiting on Christ for a husband, finally, he gave me a man that's twice divorced with a whole bunch of babies out in these streets that he's not taking care of. Like a whole vi violent man, criminal, set free from jail in America because of COVID-19. They had to let some prisoners go. And he was one of those, not because he was actually truly had, you know, had actually truly done his time. Top of that, he wasn't truly born again, so he was still a violent criminal. He went to prison for attempted murder. Like, what the heck? Like, I know. Like, you're probably listening to me on some what? You're wincing, right? Wincing. When you listen to me. But I thoroughly thought that he was a redeemed, transformed man. His entire testimony was very, very taxing. Telling of the fact that he was never saved at all. At all. Do you understand? Claimed to have been born again at the age of 15. And yet look at you now being a 40 year old man, 41 year old man, having lived a life of crime, been in and out of jail, despite having gotten saved at 15. Like there was just so much that he was that basically emanating, oozing, that told me, boy, I lost, 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 came in Kakorobela and everything. And now today, still to the, I'm still being stalked by the same guy. He's given me a great deal of tra trauma. But guess what I have from settling with that for season, for a season, a scar, a pretty bad one, I will say. Yeah but not an amputation. I'm still single. I still haven't gotten married. I still haven't had his children. I still am pretty clean, even though I've got a whole 
gash of a scar that you can see. That yo, oh wow, that's hard knock, girl. He gave me trauma. He did, but he did not permanently damage me. But some of y'all are about to permanently damage yourselves by marrying the guy in America, Tanamont, or the guy from South Africa from MTN. Taking back an ex-boyfriend that comes back after years of you being single. Telling yourself that, I mean, I, at least I've been there. I know what it's like. Like, my ex is trying to come back. Telling himself that since he hit that once upon a time, he's going to get to do it again. He's telling himself that since I have not been with anybody that whole entire time, obviously he must have been the one. So I must make like a boomerang and just go right back to that. Some of y'all are doing that, going back to exes that were in the world, claiming that they now want Jesus. Why would the Lord rescue you and make you wait 10 years for a man to get his act together? While you wait, why do you not think that God is actually doing something on the, uh, on the corner to prepare for you? Whatever it is that you ask for, he's baking it in an oven, it's prepping. And you are settling at 7 years, you're settling at 5, at 10, at 2 years. Guys, take my story, okay? I'm 39, I'm still single, I'm still waiting. If you have not yet waited 13 years since your last relationship, you are without excuse because I've done that. If you have not yet waited as I have waited, you are without excuse. You are without excuse. And I'm not even the, the pinnacle of the be all and end all of an example. There are other people who have waited even longer than me and ultimately gotten what they asked for in prayer. The Lord is the God of long suffering and patience. But the, but the devil mocks it. He mocks long suffering and patience, making it look like you're wasting time and that you're, you're too heftily expectant on something that's not coming. You need to understand that if you don't wait on the Lord, the devil will trick you into settling for something that is worse than what you had even before you came to Christ. And the reason he wants to do that is precisely because he likes to discredit God and the testimony of God and the witness of his saints. So by miserating Christians through unequal yoking, he makes it look as if though Christianity is not worth the while. And so our witness, our testimony, our ability therefore to reach people for Jesus also gets compromised by what it is that we end up settling for. Count the cost of being a disciple. Know what God expects of you. Know what it is that God expects of you so that when you are going through it, when it's horrible, when it's there are torrents, rivers, waters, rapids, tides that are coming up against you, count the cost because he showed you that this would happen. He showed you that this would happen. He told you what it's going to take. But then you must always encourage yourself with stories like those of Joseph. Stories like those of Job. Stories like those of Hannah. Stories like those of Rachel. You, you need to counsel yourself with all those people that waited in the Bible. That ultimately got what they wanted even though it looked as if there was no way under heaven that they would ever get anything. The stories like those of uh, who's this, uh, uh, David. You know how he was pursued by Saul. And he became king anyway. He became king anyway. Just remember what you prayed. Go back to the drawing board. And also, recognize that the warning signs from God about a person in your life that's wrong. Guys, they're not subtle. They are not subtle. Warning signs from Jesus, they are not subtle. They are ornate. They're showy. They're ostentatious. They're loud. They're a, 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 a gong, a cymbal. They're an orchestra, a band in the middle of a quiet night. You see them. You hear them. You you address them. And yet you marry him anyway. Or you, guys, uh, nah, proper. Or her anyway, like proper. Mm -mm. They are showy. The, the signs from the dude from America were showy, but I was trying to settle. The guy from South Africa, showy. I was trying to settle. They were all up in my face. So I'm not even speaking here about silent whispers that you can't detect the sound of. The amplitude? Nah, y'all know. So I like to say that insofar as you are yet to say I do, you can always cancel. And the thing about weddings, especially in this 21st century, they're very expensive. And people got to book venues months in advance, sometimes a whole year in advance. And if you cancel the venue before a certain time, you lose half your deposit. People, invitations have been sent out. There's like a problem with embarrassment, canceling a wedding, blah, blah. There are all these things, do you understand what I'm saying? That can hinder a person from making a decision to stop a wedding. But at the end of the day, what is, I mean, deposit their venue, how much would that be? Like let's say you paid 25,000 for that venue and then you lose like 10 or 15,000 of that 25,000. Why in the world is 15,000 for your future? What in the world is 20,000 rands for your future? What in the world are people frowning on you, looking at you as a heartbreaker that done dumped some dude for your future? Like, what, what in the world? Like, there is a song, I'm Mariah Carey, We Belong Together, right? That, that, that song, you know how in that song she's about to get married to some dude and at the altar, she makes a decision to not marry the dude she was going to marry and disappears with Michael Schofield from Prison Break. Y'all need to do that. If at all, the signs have been showy, yawning, ornate. If at all the dude has told you then apologize and you married him anyway. If the man was rude, passing you shade, giving you silent treatment, ghosting you, and then apologizing. If the guy back slaps you, telling you I'm busy when you're talking to him, it's only gonna get worse. It's only gonna get worse. I have never been rudely rebuffed by any boyfriend in the past outside of Christ. 
and then I get born again and my husband every so often tells me get out of my hair what don't come at me with any of that the dude from the, the dude from South Africa is the one that told me get out of my hair and not in so many words the one in America I once spoke uh, to him about something and he was like don't come in my face with that he, he wrote that in a DM I could not believe the way that he was speaking to me and I, I, I got to a point where he was my fiance from that time like proper it's only gonna get worse it's only going to get worse when you have never been treated a particular way and now all of a sudden you've got like cognitive dissonance all of the shock because there's like a new weird little way that you're being treated these men who are involved in occult magic they can't help but manifest insecurities when they ultimately bring you into their lives so therefore they are inclined very naturally so towards passing you shade giving you reverse psychology gaslighting uh ignoring you and then coming back to talk to you they're into ghosting they are uh, what is this uh, attitude just random hostilities like passive aggression yeah passive aggression when you don't know anything of that nature you will miss your ex-boyfriend even though the guy had to be left like this guy from mtn for five seconds he made me think that my ex in so, in so many respects was just better than him my mind literally wandered back to my ex-boyfriend during the time when i was with him and my ex was not the best of men he had to be left when a new guy makes you miss a guy that you had to leave that means you have to leave let's say that again when a new guy makes you miss a man that you had to leave that means you have to leave and i guess that can also go both ways they're full of reverse psychology and they will dump strategies on you like no man's business but they still manifest demons and like i said their mistreatment of you will be showy it'll be ornate it'll be ostentatious it'll be a whole shining light in the pitch of night and so when you ignore it you don't get to say to god but you left me to marry him what was god supposed to do kick you drag you out of your wedding venue kicking and screaming on the day when you want to marry him on the day that you walked down the aisle was he supposed to come and pull you by the ear and take you back home to your mother's house is that what god was supposed to do no he gave you everything you needed everything so when you finally end up married to the wrong guy you settled because you imagined five years was five too many to wait on god for a husband and you were allowed that though those five years of patience to be given to some random undeserving buffoon you squandered your future you squandered them you just gave him those years the bible says do not grow weary of doing good for in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you do not give up if you do not give up that's the thing that always eats me alive because in that personally i've been waiting 13 years for a husband and 10 in persecution if i do not give up tells me i must wait 11 if it takes 11 years 12 if it takes 12 13 in persecution and in totality it means i must wait 14 15 16 years when will i ever give birth but god says do not grow weary of doing good for in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you don't give up i'm being mocked for turning 40 this year and wanting nothing to do with all of these guys that are obviously compromised but you see that's just what the devil does he mocks long suffering which is a virtue and a fruit for of the holy spirit and he also mocks patience which is a virtue and a fruit of the holy spirit let him mock mock on let him mock mock on do you understand let the devil mock and see what god is doing just wait guys wait wait otherwise you will literally have squandered 10 years of patience 13 years in my case 13 years of singlehood and 10 years of persecution will have been squandered on some devil worshiping buffoon that found a beautiful woman on the internet and made a decision to use witchcraft and ended up marrying her having divorced his first wife after 10 years of persecution that's what i get to be called a home wrecker to be called gabrielle union alicia keys to be called angelina jolie a woman that's gonna go and steal another woman's man and then claim this is love not on god's watch and it certainly ought not be on your own watch either wait on god stop settling stop being second wives stop being home wreckers and then romanticizing the home wrecking phenomenon these men will romanticize anything i told you guys the other day there are some who are actually thinking along the lines of the fact that you are rachel and that their first wife was leah they will find a scripture to help you understand why you should embrace him divorcing his wife for you or you marrying a man that's been married before and his former spouse is still alive he's not a widower his wife didn't die in a car accident she's still walking these streets hopping up and down them that makes you an adulteress that's what's good like y'all need to be biblical and when you're biblical you will be protected i nearly became an adulteress thinking that i am a wife i nearly married a man that would have dissed my stretch marks during pregnancy but god rescued me 
So allow the Lord to rescue you because the rescue, like I said, it's an effort that is showy, that is shiny, that is ornate, that is ostentatious. It's just that we decide to stay in a house that is flooding when the Lord has given us a little dinghy, a boat, a life boy to get out and swim. He will not coerce us out of a wedding when we insist on finishing it off. But everything will have been given you to avoid it in the run up to. There is no one that can sit outside of my ministry right now. Listen to what I'm saying right now that is married to the wrong guy or the wrong girl that can successfully claim that they did not have a whole what of a thick textbook of warnings from God before marrying that man or that woman. They cannot deny it. Do not be those people. Do not allow the devil to steal your testimony. Do not allow it. Just wait. If you won't, I guess you will mourn on the day when people like Garabo finally get what they ask for in prayer. You will cry over Christian deliverance and breakthrough instead of rejoice because you will have settled. So it's up to you whether you will listen to me or not. But as for these men, out you're trying to mock me for being 39. Of course, you've been mocking me since I was 27. So it is no surprise that you're, you've, you're ever more effervescent in your mockery, feverish growing horns and fangs in your mockery because you've been doing it since I was 28. So it's only going to ramp up because you're that kind of guy. You're those kinds of men. You diss women for getting older. You diss women for having geriatric wombs. You diss women for having a pimple, a stretch mark. You diss women for popping a gray hair, for getting crow's feet. You diss women for popping their first fine line, their first wrinkle. You diss women for not being as beautiful as they used to be two years ago. You diss women for gaining weight. You're that guy. So of course you're dissing me for being 39 and still waiting on God patiently for a man that's never been married, a man that's never had children, and basically a future that is beautiful and bright despite being 40. Yeah, you're going to diss me because you've been doing it. Men who diss have been dissing this whole time. Women. Men who are misogynistic have been misogynistic this whole time. Men who are chauvinistic have been chauvinistic this whole time. Men who have been mocking women since they were 17 years old on the school playground are still doing it at 45. So duh, you're dissing me for being 39 and not wanting you. Using my age. All the best being what you've been all this time. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Peace. I hope you've been edified.